got our 87 C10 back in the shop today. We used it to develop the street grip system and now we're going to use it to develop the coilover system. So we're putting on one of the very first kits here today. We do have access to a lift for this truck, but since we have to start by taking the bed off, it's going to be just as easy to remove the bed on the floor and do the rear suspension on the ground. You want me to go ahead and start undoing the taillight wiring harness and all that good stuff? Yes. Yeah, I'll get the bed bolts started here. On these trucks, there's eight bed bolts and they're carriage bolts so that you really don't have to hold the top unless your bed is in rough shape. Could you apply some pressure to this rear carriage bolt there? Those are terrible. I doubt it's been apart since 87 though, so. Um, I'm checking to see if there's any extra ground straps that ground the bed to the chassis. And we do need to, we do need to actually take them off. When you're removing one of these beds, you always want to make sure everything's dis disconnected. A couple of guys, probably four, is going to take for a short bed. That'll get that bed right off. Now that we've got the bed off, uh, first thing to do on the instructions is to remove the existing brake line bracket. Now because this has been our R&D truck for other projects, this truck already has a street grip system on it. So some of the brackets are gonna be a little bit different, but we're gonna point that out as we go. So this bracket needs to come off. We're gonna remove these two rivets on this brake line bracket. And I like, to, I like to split this head of this rivet with a die grinder first so it makes peeling it off with the air chisel a lot easier. I'm gonna cut this bracket because there's a really good chance that we're not gonna have to separate this brake line from the rubber hose during this install. I'm gonna start working on the C-notch on the passenger side. Uh, John's gonna remove uh, what's left of the street grip system on the driver's side. Edit that first. I can go ahead and loosen this right. You won't need it to locate anything, correct? You are correct. Even though this truck has the street grip system on it already, the brackets that you're going to re be removing are in the same location. They're just going to look a little bit different. Okay. This rear leaf spring hanger, while we are going to remove it on our truck, it does not interfere with anything on the four link. So if you were in a time crunch, you would not have to remove it for any reason. Uh, when you're putting these C-notches in, uh, there's a hole, a factory hole in the frame to reference off of. And I've got that marked on this frame with an arrow and I just lined up the rest of them using the template, marked them, and then I always hold up the C-notch uh, before I do any cutting to verify. Narrow that up too much. I, am... I like to start with a pilot hole for the half-inch holes in the corners of the C-notch. Uh, that way you don't have to strain yourself or your drill. Now that those holes are drilled, I can mark where I need to cut. Just to make sure, I'm going to hold this C-notch up here one more time before I do any cutting. Um, I, I'm removing this brake line mounting tab here because we're going to need to cut through this area to mount the C-notch. Before we cut these C-notches in, I'm going to support this rear frame just as a precaution. It's not going to sag, but it's a good idea. There are a lot of different ways to cut out these C-notches, but in our case, the cuts are pretty straight, so I used a cutoff wheel, but a plasma cutter or die grinder would work also. Now that I got this notch cut out, I, I test fit it. And once I knew it was good, I put a little paint on these edges to keep it from rusting behind the notch. These C-notches fit tight, so it does take a little persuasion to get them into place. There's a hardware for that, and I'll start bolting that uh, on. It should be in that box that's open on the floor. Index hole to 7 16 John and I are going to trade places now. He's going to put all the bolts in and drill the holes for the C-notch on the passenger side, and I'm going to go over to the driver's side and start doing some cutting.
It's always a good idea to put the bolts in on the side of the C-notch to make sure that it is fully tight against the frame before you start drilling your holes in the top. There are a lot of holes to drill on these, but all the bolts we use is why it's so strong. The C notches have been installed. The upper cross member can be installed. Cross member is located using the three holes at the top of the C notch. Depending on your exhaust and everything else you got going on back there, this spare tire mount may have to be repositioned temporarily to get that cross member in. As you're putting this cross member in here, there's several different layers of material and a couple different bolts and a lot of things going on. It'd be really easy to get this brake line pinched behind something. So make sure that that's out of the way when you start tightening your bolts up for the cross member. While we were worried about pinching the line back here, uh, we ended up with this rubber line on top of this cross member and it needs to be on the bottom side. So we're going to take the brake line apart and fix that. The next step is to knock off these front spring eye hangers. And to do that, we got to take these rivets out. So we'll do the same thing again and split the heads with a die grinder before we use the air chisel to knock them off. If your truck's got dual tanks like this one does, when you're using your die grinder or other device to get these rivet heads off, you're gonna be pretty close to the gas tank. So use precaution. Okay. These front brackets utilize holes that are already in the frame. So there isn't any doubt on where it goes. There are a, a, quite a few bolts again on this piece, but that's what gives it its strength. Now once that's done, we're going to get to these lower brackets. Make sure you stick to the instructions close on this part. Um, the lower bracket is an integral part, so that's why we supply a torque spec. These four link bars are already preset. Even though they're adjustable, we set them at the shop before you ever get your parts. The good thing about a four link is that it's gonna keep a pretty constant pinion angle throughout the suspension travel, unlike a leaf spring when it can wrap under hard acceleration. Our four link is pretty beefy, so you're not gonna have any problems if you still wanna use your truck as a truck. Now that we got all four of our four link bars attached, we're gonna go ahead and put the panard bar on and then attach the rear coilovers. The Panard bar that we provide is also preset, but once you get your truck down on the ground at ride height, you probably want to double check the distance between your wheel and tire and the outside of your bed just to make sure. These two coilovers don't really care which way they're mounted, but on this particular truck, we find it a lot easier to adjust the shocks with the knobs facing up. So I like to turn the shock knob all the way in and then back it out till it's in the middle and that is a really good place to start with the adjustment. To clear these C notches, there is a little cutting to be done on one of the bed supports. The instructions are pretty clear and it tells you exactly how many inches over to measure. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that out. Just like we did when we cut the C notches in, I'm gonna clean up these edges and spray a little paint on there so rust doesn't start immediately. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna put the bed back on and start putting the bed bolts in. I'm gonna use a little anti-seize on these bolts just in case I ever need to take the bed off again. It really takes two people to get these bed bolt holes lined up. 